Hi everyone, I am Dr. Wafa Ibadawi, a senior consultant histopathologist and head of pathology department, AKMICH, KSA. I'll be talking about sexy cord stroma tumors of the ovary, ovarian fibroma. General background. Ovarian fibromas are benign stromal tumors composed of fibroblastic cells within a variably collagenous stroma. They are the most common sexy cord stromal tumors of the ovary, accounting for approximately 70% of tumors in this category. They represent approximately 4% of all ovarian tumors. Most fibromas are incidental findings, removed at the time of surgery for an unrelated condition. Abdominal pain is the presenting symptom in approximately 40% of cases. What is Meg's syndrome? Meg's syndrome is characterized by Ovarian fibromas, usually more than 10 cm, ascites, pleural effusion, usually right-sided. Disappearance of ascites and pleural effusion after removal of the tumor. Fibromas are rarely associated with evidence of steroid hormone production. Conventional fibromas are typically unilateral, 90%. Ovarian fibromas develop in 75% of females with Gorlin syndrome. They are often presenting at younger age under 30 years than conventional ovarian fibromas, 50 to 60 years. Ovarian fibromas are often bilateral, multinodular, multifocal, heavily calcified. Golden syndrome, it is also called nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome, is an autosomal dominant disorder and characterized by multiple basal cell carcinomas, odontogenic keratocysts of the jaw, skeletal abnormalities, ectopic calcification, erythematous spitting of the palms and soles, various tumors such as ovarian and cardiac fibromas, mutations in TTCH gene. Gross appearance. Fibromas range from microscopic to more than 20 cm, average 6 cm. They have a smooth or lobulated surface and a homogeneous, firm, chalky white cut. Edema and pseudocyst formation are frequent. Calcification is seen in up to 10% of tumors. Hemorrhage and necrosis are rare but may be present if the tumor undergoes torsion. Cellular fibroma is uniformly tan to yellow and tends to be larger in size, average diameter 12 cm, with a softer and fleshy cut surface as compared to conventional fibromas. The tumor has undergone marked cystic degeneration in this photo. Microscopic features. Based on the microscopic appearance, there are three subtypes. Conventional fibroma, almost 90% of cases. It recapitulates ovarian cortex. Cellular fibroma, it resembles a diffuse type of adult granulosa cell tumor. Mitotically active cellular fibroma. 
conventional fibroma, almost 90% of cases. The basic architectural pattern of fibromas comprises variably cellular bundles and intersecting swathes of relatively hypocellular collagenous fibrous tissue. Occasionally, they show tightly whirled story form a pattern of small spindle cells, more closely resembling normal ovarian cortical stroma. The cells have scant xenophilic cytoplasm and oval or elongated wavy nuclei with minimal or no atibia. Conventional fibromas have on average one to two mitosis per 10 high power fields. Cellular fibromas. They are uncommon and represent approximately 10% of all ovarian fibromas. The tumor shows increased cellularity with minimal to no collagen deposition. No cytologic atibia is present. Mitotically active fibroma. An increased mitotic rate is seen in the absence of cytologic atibia. Mitotically active fibromas have a mean mitotic rate of 6.7 per 10 high power feeds, ranging from 4 to 19. Mitotic activity by itself is not indicative of malignancy. It has been shown that fibromas with mitosis exceeding 3 in 10 high power feeds have a similar indolent outcome to conventional tumor. When cells are cut transversely and have pale cytoplasm due to a minor lipid content, an erroneous diagnosis of thecoma may result. Fibroma with dense collagen. These images of an ovarian fibroma show fascicles of bland fibroblast type spindle cells and dense yelling lugs in the stroma. Fibroma with minor sex cord elements. Occasional small cords or tubule-like structures of ill-defined sex cord cells set in an otherwise unremarkable fibroma. Immune stains for cytokeratins are useful to confirm the epithelial nature of poorly defined sex cords. This image shows expression of inhibin in minor sex cord elements. Edematous ovarian fibroma shows a relatively acellular collagenous connective tissue dispersed by intercellular edema fluid. Ovarian fibromas may undergo torsion. Such cases show in fact type necrosis and hemorrhage, as seen in this image. A band of viable tissue is present along the left edge. Rarely fibromas have finely granular xenophilic cytoplasm. Pericellular reticular staining pattern. Reticular stain reveals a dense fibrilla network with a pericellular distribution, that is, fibers wrap individual cells. Reticular stain differentiates fibroma individual pericellular reticular staining pattern from diffuse 
type of adult granulosa cell tumor, nested reticulin staining pattern. Prognosis and therapy. All types of ovarian fibromas, conventional, cellular, and mitotically active, pursue a benign course and have an excellent prognosis. Conservative surgical treatment consisting of unilateral or ophorectomy is sufficient. Any associated ascites or pleural effusion rapidly resolves following surgery. Cellular and mitotically active fibromas may be associated with ovarian surface rupture, resulting in extra ovarian adhesions and peritoneal implants. This is not considered a sign of malignancy and the prognosis remains excellent. Long-term follow-up is advised as they may recur locally. These are the references. Thank you.